So there's a small community and I was taught this community is English speaking so I switched from my mother language to English language and um, I have some, some information for you. I was asked to talk about the microbiome and I think it's a, a new topic and it's very interesting but I added something to the microbiome and that is and more and this and more for me is at least important as the microbiome. Um, so there is no question that today we have a problem and not only in Germany or India we have it in the whole world. People come to the curriculums they have the, the input and this is the output and in between is the put put <laughs> and the question is the question is, what makes the put-put that the people get something like that? They don't come there to get fat, but they get fat. What's happening to them? So it's a huge question and we should try to answer what is happening in the fast food bin. Yeah? Because this will help us to help the people. And to do so, we have a new understanding of our body. We have been thinking we are the crown of evolution, we are the fittest and the best, but there is something different to that. I have uh, taken a photo of some uh, um, part of the body, this is the gut, this is a topic, and this is cells of the gut, and uh, they represent about 50 billion cells in the body. And all the cells are similar, they have the complete genetic information, but they behave different, behave because they have a different function in the body, but they do it. And they are cross-talking with each other. And then we have these small animals in us, the bacteria. This is another tenfold amount of what we have as cells. And this is not the final end. They live in us, within us, on our body, everywhere. And in addition to that, we have these disgusting animals. They are called viruses. They are also living in our body, in our gut, and they are another tenfold amount more than that. And finally, there is fungi. And nobody knows where they are. I brought some toes. We know there are some fungi also. So that is the human species. It's not a single being. It's a conglomeration of environmental factor, organic factor, and this is the human being. And we have now, or meantime, we have been able to show that not only in the gut, but everywhere, also in the lung, under the arms, or in the vagina, all over the body there are the microbes living. So it's not an, exam an exemption, but it's the rule that we live together with them. In 2015 there had been publication, the planet of microbes. When this planet started producing life, it started with one cell, single cells, but then very soon it changed to become uh, bigger organisms. But the single cells didn't vanish they stayed and they're actually ruling the whole world. Yeah? There was a first life form but they are still living there and without this invisible army nothing happens on this planet, also not within the man. Yeah? So the intestine and its microbiome is a controlled environment, that's a trick. The environment is for us very difficult to, uh, to influence but if we take control over the environment within our gut, we can modulate, we can tune it, and this is a special situation. Uh, with regard to the surfaces, we all f always think that our skin is large. Indeed, it's two square meters, but if you look for the lung, it is 200 square, uh, 100 square meters, and the intestine is 400 to 500 square meters. So the huge surface, and due to this huge surface, there is also a big army behind the surface, our defense system. We have to take care of that. So, in addition, the gut is our second brain. There's a huge amount of uh, nerve cells there. And in former times, we have always said, okay, there are some people who have a gut feeling. Mm, that's, nobody knows whether this is true. Yes, it is true. It is 
our second gut. Huh? And as I already pointed out, 80% of all immune cells are living in the intestine and they are needed there because this is the area where they are needed. Huh? And the bigger, biggest immune organ is in the gut. So microbiome means symbiosis and symbiosis is the principle of nature. Uh, Darwin has teached us or has taught us that the, the strongest will, be, will survive. But it was not the strongest. It was those who had the best relation, who had the best symbiosis, because this is the best way to work. This is a publication from 2016 and it shows if you have in the gut dysbiosis, not working together because you have bad bacteria in the gut, then the lining, the cells lining that, they get sick and then you get gastrointestinal diseases, but not only that, you get all the organism influenced by this uh, dysbiosis and we get multiple diseases which are original or originated from the gut. So we have a lot of things immune deficiency and allergies and psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, chronic recurrent infections and colon irritabile, very modern disease, meteorism has always happened like that, um, diarrhea, constipation, both of them are dependent on the microbes, chronic inflammatory bowel disease, also very problematic for school medicine to solve, and mycosis, yeah, they are also in there, and mental disorders. Even the mental disorders are related to the gut situation. So there's a huge amount of things happening because there is a distorted disturbed microbiome. Yeah. The probiotics, that means the good bacteria, compete with the pathogens and by that they reduce the risk of colonization by pathogens. If you have a huge army of probiotics, the pathogens cannot grow, so they are cut out. They produce antimicrobial bactericides and fatty acids so we have a pharmaceutical company in our gut which is working for us. They increase the phagocytic activity of the granulocytes and influence the immune response in the gut. If it is working correctly, then the gut is healthy and the whole system is healthy. In case it's not, the system is suffering. It stimulates the production of secretary IgA and it can degrade toxins of pathogenic bacteria. So it's a whole world working together in our sense or against us, depending on what sort of gut bacteria we have. And this depends on what we are eating. If we eat the wrong things, the good gut bacteria are starving. And when they starve, they cannot work. And there's a problem with our food. We don't eat the food they need to help us. We eat something we think is good for us, but it is just not good for us. Yeah? And by having the right food, we support the pathogen, and having the wrong food, we support the wrong way. So what happens to the probiotics when I take them like a supplement? They cover the surface of the intestinal uh, area, and then the pathogens cannot come into it. So it's a simple, everyday procedure which is working quite well without that we have to pay attention for that. But we have to give the, the condition for the gut bacteria that they can grow and that they can work. There's a lot of pre and probiotic effects. You know the difference pre and probiotics? The probiotics are the the uh, bacteria and the prebiotics is what they are feeding, what they are eating. And you have to have both that it works. Um, so there's a long list, I'm not going through all of that, um, but just as you know, we have the both effects. Um, what factors are influencing the microbiome? It starts with the delivery. When you come to the world, it starts the delivery. If you have caesarean section, then you have a bad microbiome as grown up. Why? because you are missing the bacteria from your mother. The bacteria from the mother are the first to colonize your uh, gut and if you are torn to the world by the um, gynecologist or by the surgeon, then you, your 
gut system is not contaminated by the bacteria of your mom and then you have the wrong uh, bacteria some of the, the skin some of the the glass from the uh, surgeon but you don't have the right and then you have a problem right. then if you live in a very hygienic world you are killing the bacteria and they are not bad they are good for us and if you're killing bacteria either by uh, hygienic measurements or by antibiotics then you have as a result a different population of bacteria and then you get sick because the population is stronger antibiotics the nutrition the fat condition is has the wrong fat there if you have not enough fibers long time we have thought fibers are necessary to have digestion but it's not true it's not that they are undigested and responsible that there is something coming out but the bacteria eat the non-digestible parts of our food they live from that so if you eat only concentrated food which are resorbed like carbohydrates then nothing is left for the bacteria they are starving and then you have a bad situation and not to forget the stress um, I'm going to show you a picture later that the stress is a very important factor on our gut bacteria so the stress goes down but also the bad influence from the gut goes up to the brain and we have neuropsychiatric prosecute disorders why the brain is an organ like any other organ also you have to feed it you have to take care of it and then it works and it's not um, a mental problem it's a brain problem the brain as organ is sick and not your um, mental things so we have to take care of all the factors which are influencing our brain and then we have a healthy brain and we won't have mental diseases the same is true with obesity um, long time we have been thinking that um, the people who are obese they are just eating too much some of them are but others have the wrong bacteria uh, special types of bacteria have a different type of uh, digestion and some of them even produce energy in addition so these people get more from the same food than usual and then you have obesity um, they have done a study with mice it was done in Germany in Berlin and um, they uh, transplanted the gut bacteria who was responsible to uh, do things like that and then they looked for what happened with the, uh, um, the mice and look at that on the left side wrong gut bacteria on the right side typical bacteria for mice yeah. so this is a huge problem we know about but we are far away from handling it yeah. we have the same uh, situation you know that we do stool transplantation today for people who have very uh, bad uh, disease of the gut the wrong uh, bacteria and we can help them but if we have a sort of if we transplant a sort of gut bacteria which have something like that then even in humans it happened yeah there is one case of a lady who was very very sick they did stool transplantation she uh, was helped very good but after half a year she got fatter and fatter and fatter she had the wrong set of bacteria yeah? so also in humans yeah? so we have to keep in mind that the immune system is modulated by the gut bacteria why they are living close <coughs> door to door to each other and whenever you have a change in your uh, gut uh, biotope you have also the immune system reacting with that if you get a leaky gut that means that the cells are no longer tight junctions together then some of the material and even nutritional material goes to the or comes to the whoop, this one comes to the whoop, 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 yeah comes to the gut and uh, to the immune system and then the immune system reacts to nutrition and if you eat something what you have been eating every day in the last years all of a sudden you get an immune reaction a chronic immune reaction to what you're eating and this is a huge problem no? so you can change that if you take 
probiotics and you can compensate also taking antibiotics for the negative effect. Whenever you take antibiotics, the name is antibiotics, yeah? that means against life. If you take probiotics, you can compensate for this. And you see a, a, a study which they have done, uh, the baseline that was uh, placebo and the um, control was bifidus. And then you see that after two, two weeks that those who had the antibiotics without probiotics, they have a bad finish and they kept their bacteria growth. So you can compensate in cases of exposure. Yeah? Or an anti-inflammatory, in fact, again, if you give the probiotics, you can put the anti the inflammatory effect down. Yeah? And then what I already told you, the gut brain axis, you have here in this picture the gut microbiota, you have the lining cells of the gut and usually they are tied together. If you have a leaky gut, you can see that the content of the gut can go through. Here you have the immune cells and they react with whatever comes down, if it is nutrition or if it is bacteria, reaction with the immune cells, this gives a reaction in the system which goes up to the brain by the vagus nerve and on the same way things come down, cortisol and so on, on the gut. So if you have stress, you are destroying your gut bacteria. If you have bad gut bacteria, they are destroying your brain. This is all interacted. And even <coughs> physical activity obviously is connected to the gut. And there's a publication in 2017 and they showed if you have an active lifestyle, your micro diversity in the gut is different from those who have an inactive lifestyle. So obviously there's also a relation between these two. We do not know how this works, but we know that there's intensive muscle activity. The muscle is an endocrine organ. It produces myokines and the myokines are used all over the body to steer, to organize the body. Obviously also the gut profits from physical activity. You can prescribe them yeah? and you can by that you can re-establish a healthy immune system. Yeah? You can help after antibiotic or during uh, antibiotic therapy. You can use as prevention when you go to a country where you have a chance to get an infection. Gastrointestinal infection you can do it as preventive. Yeah? If you have skin disorders, yeah? there are a huge amount of dermatologists who are still convinced that they have to put some lotion on the skin. It's not true. The skin is nourished from inside. And the ladies who put their cosmetics on the skin, they should be very, very wise and take a look what they are putting on the skin. Because everything you put on the skin is resorbed. So, if you have a cosmetic, you should look what it is and if you are not uh, ready to take it with a spoonful and eat it, you should not put it on your skin because it comes to the body, either by eating or by putting on the skin. And this is a problem also with the solar um, blocker. There is a lot of garbage in the solar blockers, chemical garbage, we cannot use, so we should take other things. Yeah? Hmm? Botox fillers, are, there, are they the same as well? Lip fillers, Botox fillers? I think uh, a part of the Botox also goes its way into the body anyway. Yeah, it would be a, a, a wonder that it does not. Yeah. Maybe it reacts in the place. I'm not a specialist in Botox. Maybe it reacts in the place so it will stick yeah, as an antigen reaction and then it will not. But I think a little part of that will also go out. Yeah. So, so absorbing as same as yeah. Yeah. Crohn's disease, colon cancer, also cancer as I told you. Yeah. Lactose intolerance, many many people have lactose intolerance and you can improve it by giving a special um, probiotica. Yeah. So the microbiome is an essential part of our body and the environment. Yeah. And I have made this uh, picture to show the, the microbiome in our gut. Billions of animals living there and interacting 
with all our organs, be it the brain, the heart, the glands, the musculature, and all these organs are interacting with each other. So it's very important to learn or to realize that if you have a problem with the skin, it's not a skin problem. It's just a symptom of the problem of the system. And you have to take care of the system and then the skin problem will go away. The same with the heart or the brain or whatsoever. And then we have the environment outside and there's a large amount of positive things. That means resources from the environment which will help us. Clean water, social things like love, food and cooking, regeneration, the silence in the night, music and all these things, we need them as resources, as human resources. And we have lost them. Almost 80% of the population in the modern westernized um, civilizations have lost them. It's the, the whole problem started in America because they had the most modern civilization and it took me several years to understand why America is far ahead of us because they are not uh, wiser or more shrewd than us. What is the reason? And I found out it's the last century we had two world wars, world wars in Europe and America took part into the world wars but they did not suffer from the world war, they profit from the world war. So their civilization went on. They were the first to have the bad food, they were the first to have the skyscrapers and all that. And that is the reason why they were the first to get sick. Yeah? 20 years ago, the uh, American people were fat, became fat. In Europe, we were laughing at the fat American people. Today, we have the fat European people there. And then you go over, look for Japan. Japan, Japanese people like that. Small, 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 except for Zumo ringers, yeah? but the rest small. If you now go to Tokyo, you see fat J uh, Japanese people walking around. Unbelievable. So whenever you take the modern uh, way of living, which comes from America, you have the same problem, because we disturb the resource. The modern food, there is nothing in. There's calories in there, but no micronutrients. But we need the micronutrients, not the calories. And then naturally we have um, also the negative things, disasters, but also the toxic substances like particles from the uh, gas from the uh, cars, but also pesticides and so on. So all this is influencing our body system and if we can compensate, as long as we can compensate for this, it works. And we were able to compensate as long as we had the positive things. In the way we lost also the resources, we can no longer compensate for that and then we get sick. The problem is, even if we learn everything about the gut bacteria, it will not help us. We had the same effect 20 years ago, we learned everything about our uh, genome, microbiome genome, everything about genome and the people, the scientists said when we know the genome we know everything and we can help, we can cure everything. They deciphered the, the genome and then they said oh, we know nothing because the genes were not in the, in the position to explain how the cell is working. So the same will happen here. If we decipher all the problems or all the aspects of the, uh, um, the uh, microbiome, there come the next problem that is the bacteriophages, that is the virome. The viruses are also living in the gut. And when we have learned everything and the machines to, in, to um, do the research are free from the microbes, we are using that for the viruses and we learn a huge amount of things about viruses, but it will not be sufficient to know how we are working, how our um, body is working. And if we have done that, we have the microbiome. There is not missing an R, it's the microbiome, it's the fungi. We have to learn about the fungi and we will never learn enough to understand everything. So we have to, to get an other idea what we have to do or what we can do to help the things. And there is a, a quote from 1973, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And I changed that a little bit and said nothing in health makes sense except in the light of <laughs> evolution. Yeah? You have to look at evolution and it helps understand how our organism works. Yeah? And 
evolution means symbiosis. We started all with a single cell billions of years ago and then there came some of these cells on the idea to go together to make symbiosis and all the rest is the history and this was a huge success story which was stopped at this moment when he started making weapons he started killing each other and he started changing the surface of the world by agriculture. Then we had a different uh, environment and with the different environment we lost the resources we had for billions of years. Yeah? So we should not modify the genes because it's extremely dangerous. We know nothing about that. Yeah? We should tune the genes like nature does it. It tunes by epigenetics and we can do that. And if it is not correctly working, we can retune without any problem, but we do no harm. And this is just to show that Chinese, Chinese medicine, which always in Germany or in the Western world has been looked at in a deceptive way, the Chinese medicine now is seen that what we know about from the lab together with these ideas explain us what's happened in the, the body. So if we restart observing our body, if we start learning again what nature is done or doing, then we have a good chance to learn how to behave in a healthy way. So we have a balance of environmental factors. We had rift respect and we have been looking for that. Cigarette smoke, pollution, grilled food, alcohol, all that. Okay, we have to take care of that. But we have also to take care of that. The micronutrients, the physical activity, the vitamin D, the social element, all what I told you, this is protective factor, this is negative. What we have been doing is we have been putting on this side of the balance and we have unloading here. Micronutrients are gone, physical activity is gone, vitamin D is gone, and then the balance goes away. And this is the reason why we get sick. We have an unbalanced system, our system is top, but the balance we lost, and then the system can no longer work. And I can show you a study which has been done in Germany. 20,000 Germans participants were taking part and they looked only for four lifestyle factors. Not very much. It was a BMI under 30, physical activity, non-smoking, a Mediterranean diet, so a healthy diet. No huge problems, everyday work. What came out? Only 10% of the German population is able to fulfill this. 10%, not more. So it's not the single person who decides to behave in the wrong way, it's a society which as a whole has changed. And we have the problem, as I told you, in the uh, advanced societies, but now we have the same problem in India, we have the same problem in China. 30% of Chinese children are fat. 50 years ago they were starving, now they are fat children. Why? They adapted the Western lifestyle. Huh? The result was, the more positive factors were present, the lesser the incidence of chronic diseases. Well, you can say, that I have anticipated, if you have less risk, so it's not necessary to do such a huge study with 20,000 people. That's correct. But if you have 20,000, you can do a risk calculation with percentage and look at the percentages. Minus 90% diabetes, it's gone. 80% myocardial infarction is gone, 80% all chronic diseases. So if we keep a lifestyle without these risks, there is no disease left. And I remember, I'm 75 years old, I remember the situation after Second World War, there was no diabetes, there was also no cancer, nothing was there. And then we got a rich company and we got sick everywhere the same. Yeah? So lifestyle is actually the clue to health, yeah? but 9% only. And if you look to the, the literature, you find study by study, be it uh, the nutrition, be it physical activity, be it uh, vitamin D, always 80-90% of the people are on the wrong side. Yeah? So what can we do? The epigenetic, as I told you, is the interface between the environment and our genes. And there is the situation we can change. And supplied with the necessary resources and 
the knowledge about that, then we can, can, can protect us from the environment pollution. We have to teach the people what is good and what is wrong. In former times, people were informed. Why were they informed? The information went not by newspapers, it went by mouth, from the grandparents to the small children. We know today why we get so old as a human race. Because usually, if a, an animal has reproduced, it's going to die. But we're living twice as long as reproduct every. And we, the experts have been thinking, what's happening? And now we know. It's not the, children, the, the parents teaching their children, because they always went out for work as hunter and gatherer. It was the grandfather and the grandmother and the aunt sitting in the cave teaching the children. And today the society is gone. We are no longer together with the children. Everybody is living in a ghetto. The children are the kindergarten ghetto, the school ghetto, the company ghetto, and then we go to the uh, uh, last ghetto in the, in the hospital. So the tradition is gone. And what we are learning in the newspapers is wrong because what is advertised is making money and not what is healthy for us. So we have to teach our people or patients what they can do to stay healthy. Yeah? And the body needs only this information and these resources and he can behave because we have an inborn physician who helps us with that. Yeah? This is a millennium goals of the WHO, but they do not know how to do it. Yeah? And it's very simple to do it. Yeah? So this again for the environmental health. And I would like to invite you to become a part of my network for optimal health. We have there the experts, we have the therapeutes, we have the, um, the companies who produce good things. There are enough companies who produce good things. We have the communities. And the, my academy is translating what the experts produce for the therapeutes but also for the communities and they are informing them what they have to do and we are informing the people about what is uh, achievable here. So if we set up such a network we can help everybody to stay healthy because we get the knowledge, we got the, uh, the products, we got everything. And in addition, if we stick together, we have a community for health. There is, as far as now, worldwide, no lobby for health. There's a lobby for guns, there's a lobby for bad food and so on, but no lobby for health. So we should form a lobby for health. And then we represent completely different. Because if we a lot of people together, we can sing a choir and we can sing very loud. Huh? And within this uh, network for optimum health, we can do clusters to promote vitamin D or health in the, uh, in the uh, companies or take care of patients after surgery for cancer. It's a disaster what's happening worldwide. You develop a cancer, a lady develops a cancer of the breast and then the surgeon says, okay, I cut it out and you are healed. It's wrong. It's a dirty lie. He has just taken away a symptom. But the body is sick and he has been looking at this disease. The immune system has not blocked it, has looked at it, and the immune system is not um, satisfied or is not sanitized by that because the surgeon has done nothing on the immune system. So after this school medical procedure has been done, we have to take care of the cancer patients and teach them what has been wrong in their system so that they are able to do it. The same is with uh, diabetes or depression. We have to take care of them and teach them what they can do for their system that they get healthy. Yeah. So if we do that, we have actually the potential. We send in the people, the sick people in here, in the heart, has the epigenetics, and they come out like that. Yeah. So we can do it, and it's the inner physician who helps us with that, and that's all for today. Thank you so much. And naturally you may ask, if you have any questions, you may ask. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite one, yeah. <laughs>